Deus Ex Machina. There are many types of RPGs out there. However, the biggest in that bubble are JRPGs. And even within that bubble, there are three big fish. Square Enix's Final Fantasy franchise is the one you'll probably be the most familiar with. Then there's the other Square Enix franchise, Dragon Quest. These aren't nearly as popular over here as they are in Japan. Then there's the third and most definitely least, and... Huh, that's a weird way to spell Square Enix. Megami Tensei. If you've heard of Persona before, then you've got a vague idea of what a Megami Tensei game is like. This franchise was started way back on the Famicom with Digital Devil's Story, Megami Tensei. And if that name sounds familiar to you, then God help you. It is very, very loosely based on the book of the same name. Atlas made a name for themselves with the DDS games. They would use it as a launch pad to create their own series, Shin Megami Tensei. To my knowledge, this would also lead them to invent the musical genre known as jazz. But in between these two milestones, Atlas would shit out a little game for the Dreamcast called Machin X. You see, Atlas, like many companies at the time, made a bunch of fucking video games of wildly different qualities. Just in the beginning of 2002 alone, they would make Learn with Winnie the Pooh, followed by My Disney Kitchen, which was then followed up on with Shin Megami Tensei 2, a post-apocalyptic game in which you and a band of demons kill God to stop the creation of heaven. Machin X was created by Atlas R&D 1 for the Dreamcast. I bought this one at my first ever Too Many Games. I've never heard of it before, but I recognized the art style, so I bought it right then and there. Though, what the box boasts about is giving me buyer's remorse. Or maybe that's just heartburn. Whoa, an innovative autofocus system? Bro, you mean lock-on? Zelda was doing that shit in 96. Oh wow, positional 3D audio? Cool. I'll uh, positionally 3D audio your face and... Uh, okay, I don't have a good joke for this one. Oh wow, seven different endings. But, but what about the skiing trip? We were supposed to go on the skiing trip. But, but the skiing trip! What about the skiing trip? Machin X begins with its first major twist. You are in fact not the girl on the front cover. You are the sword she's carrying. Its name is Machin, but you're free to call it whatever you like, including MC Pants. Or I guess MC Pant. No, the girl is actually named Kei Sagami. She's a high school student with dreams of becoming a scientist like her father. Oh, and hey, looks like it's a party in the top secret underground lab. Woo woo! Cause Kei's tutor is here too. Shit, do Japanese high schools have a mandatory drip policy? Check this man's fit, man. Honestly, Kay's dripping a little too. They're both rocking that classical Asian style. Not this guy, though. Beep, 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 beep. Uh-oh, looks like my gaydar is going off. <laughs> but that's okay, because something even gayer busts in and kills some people. I mean, seriously, a thong over the jeans? Holy shit, I didn't know it could display full color like that. And we can't let that bit go unchecked. So Kay grabs Machin and we go kick some ass. And out of all styles of game they could have picked, Atlas went for first person perspective. Uh, hello? You know you're developing for Dreamcast, right? The system was zero buttons and one stick? This is a first person game running on tank controls, which means that I hope you don't mind being able to see shit. You can look around while holding down the left trigger, though given there's only one control stick, you won't be able to move. In most cases, the levels accommodate your limited visibility pretty well, actually. In other cases, though, they put in platforming. While limited visibility platforming may not be enough to create some gray hairs, limited visibility combat may be just what you need to turn you from 16 to 60 in minutes. You know that phrase, you don't appreciate something fully until it's gone? That's what free camera movement is here. You'll never fully appreciate it until you've been blasted by one too many off-screen projectiles. But there is a shining glimmer of hope because lock-on is the key to most of your combat-related woes. Simply press the Y button and voila, your cancer is cured. Once you've learned that lock-on is your god, the game starts getting fun. In order to avoid incoming attacks, you'll be jumping up and down and all around. Jumping to the left, right, and sometimes even over enemies. Sort of like Ocarina of Time on Coke. Though there are some little things that bug me. As I said earlier, there aren't many buttons on this thing, so actions like heavy attack and block are mapped to forward and back on the stick respectively. Which the block I don't mind that much, it's like any fighting game, you know? The heavy attack though, I would've like mapped to the only unused face button on the controller. Now, ah, well, it's not anything to make a big deal about. What is something to make a big deal about though are these cutscenes. Jesus tap dancing Christ, these are long. I've only been able to play the game for like 5 minutes tops. The rest of it has been spent watching the best produced cutscenes the Dreamcast can offer. It's got everything you could ever want. Stilted acting, speed reading lines, Lonnie Manella. 
the roulette of sometimes having the clearest audio you've ever heard, which is then contrasted with one where you can literally hear the recording booth the actor is standing in, and probably the best old man voice recording in a video game. Let us focus now to clear our impure minds and think of a higher power. Since we're stuck here in Cutscene-ville, I wanted to talk about Ko. He's a loser. He sounds like a dork, all he really does is whine. I mean, granted it's completely justified given his best friend is at risk of losing her personality to a sword, but I want to make fun of him anyway. Haha, <laughs> your childhood friend is going to become a sword. Na 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 Don't worry, he doesn't really do anything in the story anyway. Though apparently you can play as him if you go for one of the alternative endings. But why would I want to play as a recent victim of a car accident? I mean seriously, what is he even gonna do? Swing his medical bills at me? I should back up a bit, because I haven't even mentioned brainjacking yet. Brainjacking is what Machin is all about, see? For this game's second twist, you are not actually the sword, but this bootleg behelt looking ass motherfucker right here. What this ugly bitch does is make its victims ten times cooler in exchange for their souls. Or sigh as the game puts it. Oh, and it has full control of the victim, too. I guess that's important. Every brainjackable person is different from the last. Different attacks, specials, health bars, jump heights, etc. However, you can't just jack off whoever you please. You'll need a high enough BJ rank. BJ rank. You want to keep that number up, because if you miss out on anybody... <laughs> BJ rank. <laughs> You'll miss the critical path, because Atlas is made up of a bunch of bastards. But we'll bitch on that bridge once we get to it. For now, let's go see the sights. Travel the world, as it were. Let's go to Athens. I love Hercules. It's my first, sixth, third favorite movie. I've never seen it before in my life. But you know, it was fun in Kingdom Hearts, so I'm confident I'll have mountains of fun in this stupid, fucking, dusty ass piece of shit. Fuck this place. And fuck you too, Hercules, you fucking grease. Try this fire so close. <laughs> Look, dude, this place sucks. Is this what people in Greece do on a daily basis? Fall into pits and fight the same big bitch over and over again? It's especially agitating when the walls start spitting fire bars at you. Don't listen to their mixtape. It will kill you. And you'll have to start the stage from the beginning. Oh, and I hope you enjoy the elevator. You'll be on it a lot, too. Though it can be frustrating in some stages, for the most part I wouldn't consider having to redo the whole stage again on death to be a big deal. Stages in Machin X are bite-sized, lasting only a few minutes at a time. This is a double-edged sword, great for short little bursts of fun, also not as much of a hassle to replay, but by the time some stages get going, you've already crossed the finish line, resulting in a feeling of emptiness. Same goes for some of the characters you'll play as. Most of them only last about a stage before you'll net a new one, and there's never a reason not to switch off. The new bastard is always 100% better. You know, not that you'd want to stick with somebody who thought putting a candle on their head was a good idea, but I digress. I've been clowning on these designs the whole time, but can I ask, what fucking drugs was the character designer smoking? These are some of the silliest designs I think I've ever seen. Who wakes up in the morning and decides, what if we wore umbrellas instead of holding them? By the way, this doofus is supposed to be an oil baron. Us. Our almighty lord has taken control of the western leader, and has begun a final action. To create a paradise that no mere human could ever envision. To infinity and beyond! Penultimate stage takes us to the White House, of all places, to fight this guy, Hake Brown, or Hake William as he's known in the Japanese version. Which is an odd change, but one I can forgive because this fucking guy, this fucking guy delivers the best line in the whole game. So this guy's giving you a speech and, uh, let's be honest, he sounds like a dork. Salutations, Machin. I am Hake Brown. He then strikes a pose and says this. What? is it that you don't like about creating absolute order with a god's power? Well, your opinion makes no difference to me. I don't need to understand you. <laughs> Cause you'll be dead in just a few seconds. Dude, from the pose, the delivery, and when he just fucking snaps his own neck. God, I love this line. So we beat him up and steal his body, then make our way to the last boss where he gives us some spiel about why tater tots kick ass before giving us the option to either fight him or leave with the info on how to separate K Sai from Machin. I picked the latter option first because I thought it seemed like the best ending. K 
Kay is saved and the bad guys thwarted for the time being. But no, this motherfucker wakes up and is like, Well, no, you didn't say my father. I guess machines really don't have feelings. Like, bro, I saved your fucking life. It's not like you're gonna spend time with him anyway. You were just gonna be on Twitter all day going like, da, 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 da. Fuck you. Da, 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 da. So this time I decided to kick this guy's ass. He's pretty easy. The second phase confused me a little, but nothing I can't handle. This time Kay's father is saved, but Kay turns into like a demon or something. It really looks like one of those shadow versions from Persona. But regardless, that ending was about as anticlimactic as the last. What the hell am I missing? Well, as it turns out, one stage. Count them, one stage. The whole time I was supposed to know to go to John Dark Palace as Mr. Don fucking Corleone to fight the last goober I needed to get the best ending. Oh, and I can't even get it now. Dude's just gone now, probably off living it up in Hawaii, fucking college sluts or some shit. Fuck me. I'll be honest and say that I do not like alternate endings in games because the alternatives are almost always terrible. You'll always have the true ending and then some other fucking options that add nothing. Not a goddamn thing to the story. And I don't understand what Alice's obsession with them are. You'd be hard pressed to find an Atlas developed game without an alternate ending. No, my Disney kitchen doesn't fucking count. And in Mach and X, they're almost all anticlimactic or require some wacky ass shit to get to them. So why even bother? I wouldn't recommend this game for its story. Unless you're the type who likes reading lore. Cause from what I saw in the Megaten wiki, everybody's got some deep backstory. Now where they found this info is a mystery to me, but what I can tell you is that the game itself is pretty cool. But before you go off and scour the internet for a copy, might I interest you with this instead? This is Mach and Shao the Demon Blade for the PS2. This is a full-on redo of Mach and X with a boatload of improvements. I didn't play it for that long, but I can already say this gets my recommendation over the original. If I ever were to play Mach and X again, this is the way I'd do it. First off, major improvement by switching the camera to third person. This was apparently done to reduce motion sickness for Japanese players. However, it comes with the added benefit of being able to see your surroundings. Now, mind you, the take controls are still here, but the perspective makes this much more palatable. Another added bonus is the block is now on a separate button, and different attacks now require different inputs to use. Not exactly what I want, but it's a change I can live with. And if the need to restart stages from the beginning really irks you, well, worry not, as Mach and Xiao now has checkpoints, which seems like it would come in handy for places with boss encounters. One more interesting addition I'd like to mention is the inventory in the bottom left. Anytime you grab a pickup, it'll go into that inventory for later use. Honestly, it's not really needed. It only really serves to make an already easy game easier. If Mach and X is good at anything, it's a fun bubblegum game. It's fun for a little while, which works in the game's favor given the typical runtime is about 5 hours. If you're a fan of alternate endings, which there are a lot of, you could tack a few more hours on, but that's really about it. It's a small game that it knows what it wants to and who it wants to be. Just don't take the game out of the Dreamcast, whatever you do, because you might end up encountering one of the seven alternate endings where the game fucking breaks and one of the shards from the discs impales you in the heart and fucking kills you instantly. <laughs>